Hello there, I'm just looking at, is that your sign? Yeah. Uh, what's, what does the Hari mean? What is it? It's a, a way of uh, understanding of Islamic. Oh, okay. So I tried to do it for another. Yeah, is it still considered within Sunni Islam? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Alright. Okay. Hey. It's not a competition. It's not a competition. chatting shit about you earlier. I'm joking, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Okay, so so we, we would reject each shahad. Um, I'm learning, <laughs> I'm learning so, from him. Learning from him. So my understanding I'm learning from him. Oh, you're learning from him. He's the main man. He's got more experience. He's a cameraman shit. He's got more experience. 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 Yeah. We'd reject that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right then. So you 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 accept um, consensus though, uh, Ishma. Yeah, well, so the Ishma the, of the Sahaba, uh, just yeah. the Sahaba. Yeah, yeah. And Tabi um, Tabi Il or Tabi Un as well. Those yeah. guys as well. The next generations. No, I don't accept the consensus because I don't believe it's possible to actually provide consensus. Consensus is the saying of each and every single one. If one disagrees, I don't consider that consensus. Oh. So for the Tabio, yeah. they spread too much on the land. Right. So I don't believe it's possible to say, oh, they agreed on something. But that makes sense. Someone that makes agree. sense because when I was looking into this sort of stuff, I saw that the Sahaba, if you include the three generations, that actually covers a lot of time, right? Like a long yeah. period. So um, there are some, though, that seem to date from that period who went astray. So there are some who, I don't know, Kadaria and uh, yeah, yeah. Jama, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and all these different things. So, as a Muslim, is it fair to say that you don't accept everything the, the Sahaba say, only the consensus of the Sahaba, or the consensus of the first generation? The consensus of, the, the consensus of Sahaba. Sahaba is those that... Uh, oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, my while bias. being Muslims, yeah. Yeah. and died being Muslims. This is what's considered Sahaba. Met the Prophet while, me, while being Muslim and died as Muslim. Oh, uh, okay. The people that met them, mm. like Hassan al-Basri and so on, mm. they are not Sahaba. And right. their consensus, I don't believe it's proof if the Sahaba differed on something, to claim that they arrived to a consensus that oppose the, the, that, I, mm. I don't believe it's possible. So, with the consensus... Okay, okay. I mean, that makes sense. I think, I think that's a fair way of doing things. I guess my issue with Ijma, like consensus in general, is that I don't think there ever was, even amongst very close, very highly thought of companions, um, like Ubay ibn Kab or Abdullah ibn Masud, there was never consensus over quite important things. So for example, when Uthman did his um, recension of the Quran in roughly around 652, then it wasn't complete consensus by the Sahaba on what that recension was. So, you know, Uthman, the third caliph, he came and he said, right, uh, there's, a, there's like a hadith, I, I assume you accept. So, yeah. if, if um, there is no consensus on something, the topic needs to be looked at and see which one is the correct, and that's it. But yeah. Oh, okay. So, even if yeah. there's no consensus. If, if there is no consensus on something, right. then you look at what's the closest to the truth. Who's bringing the proof from the Quran, from the Sunnah, and you obey that. This is the okay. Okay, so for example, there is a verse in the Quran that talks about uh, when you make an oath and the oath uh, is broken and what, is, what, what do you need to do if you break an oath? And basically it talks about, I think freeing a slave is one thing and if you can't do that, then you're meant to feed so many people. And if you can't do that, you're meant to fast. And it says for fasting for three days. But that particular verse has a variant from um, Abdullah ibn Masud's uh, codex, I think, and he read it differently. When he was reciting this in prayer, he would recite it that you were to fast three consecutive days. Sorry. Yeah. Um, how is this related to Ijma now then? Sorry? Or oh, but my understanding is like, so, so you have the madhabs, right? Yeah. And they, they, come, they give legal rulings on um, yeah. understandings of the Quran, for example, or the sh uh, Sharia. So there, is there are differences in that, right? 
So the school I'm talking about, I think, is the Hanafi school. The Hanafi school, um, because they accept Abdullah Ibn Masud's uh, reciting of this verse, he recited it slightly differently. He, had, he added the word consecutively. So if you follow the Hanafi school, you are to fast for three consecutive days if you uh, break an oath and you can't uh, free a slave or you can't, um, what was the other one? You can't feed so many people. I guess from my perspective though, if people that are that close, I mean, Abdullah Ibn Masud was a, a major companion. If he himself had his own different codex with a different ruling, that seems to be problematic in terms of how you would follow that with certainty. So when there is a, even a hadith that one seems to indicate something and the other seems to indicate the other thing, right. the way we approach this is that we believe that this is like an acceptable uh, difference of opinion. Okay. Yeah? Yeah, yeah sorry. But the moment we, like other uh, principles are brought to the table, mm. then we reject that. But yeah, obviously, even okay. we, yeah, yeah. if we only take a hadith, Quran, Sunnah, and, and Ijma, yeah. we will find there is disagreement. Yeah, this, we believe it's uh, understandable to have disagreement on this. Okay. And it's not... Well, you see, the, the reason I brought that particular issue up in terms, of, uh, in terms of fiqh is because it reveals something quite theologically important, that Abdullah ibn Masud had a different codex from the Uthmanic Codex. Yeah, sorry, but are you interested in talking about Usul al or are you interested in talking about the Quran and its preservation? Well, because I, I guess, I guess, so... I'm trying to lead things to a type of conversation that, as you can see, I'm yeah. going to talk about so, so Usul you, So you disagree so with... If you want to talk about Usul, I'm happy, but if not, I had the conversation too many times about... Well, I think we... For not and these things. We might be agreeing in a sense, because I think one of the problems with the four madhabs is that at least one of the madhabs affirms a slightly different variant in a verse of the Quran than the other madhabs because they follow a recitation from Abdul Ibn Masud. So that to me seems like an irreconcilable issue within the four madhabs, or at least the Hanafi and the others. Does that make sense? Uh, not quite, but I think, okay. Okay, <laughs> okay, oh, sure. right, right, right. okay. <laughs> like, yeah. Do you think it's, it's okay what? to have different variants in the Quran? Well, I think it's... Uh, I don't understand how this is related to principles of it, so. Oh, because it directly impacts no, how we you... Have, we have different recitations. Yeah. And they're all valid, is that your view? Yeah. Even if they change the ruling? Well, what do you mean they change the ruling? So Abdullah Ibn Masud, he says, you have to fast three consecutive days. Okay. And the other schools say, no, no, you can fast which, one day and then... Can you point me out what's, what's yeah, the yeah, let me see if I can find it for you. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's in Surah al -Bakla. Um Uh, and you know, then I have to Because Imam Masood narrates halves as well. Yeah, halves. Mm, That's yeah. the narrator. Like, yeah, yeah, it's the main one that we use today. Like, halves so, uh, and Asim. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Right, but. Um, hang on, I'm gonna have to try and Google this. Crown verse breaking. And what's interesting is the Tafsir, Tafsir Ibn Kathir actually mentions this, how the Hanafi school follow uh, a different interpretation of the verse because Abdullah Ibn Masud, um, he... Plenty of Hafali as well where people come with different in, like, uh, understanding of it. Sometimes even the same uh, hadith is understood in different ways by the one abandoning prayer. Some people reach the conclusion the person is a disbeliever. Some people say it's not. Uh, oh, I think I found it. I think it's Surah Maida, Ayah 89. Which, which? Uh, Surah 5? No, which reading? Uh, well, this is Hafs. But um, you can read Tafsir on that verse. No, but which is the other reading? The one that you say is that it's problematic. It's it's. Uh, from my knowledge, I don't think it actually is a different Qur'at, it's just a known way that Ibn Masud would say it. Maybe it is a different Qur'at, but I'm not sure exactly which one it is. <laughs> hey, is that yours? Yeah. What, what, what does it say? Tell me. Uh, yeah, I'd rather have the conversation. <laughs> no, no, just tell me. I'll try and buy this verse so you can speak really, to it for a second. Really, okay. uh, I've had the conversation too many times on, okay. on, 
on uh, preservation of Quran and these things, and I'm just not interested in having it. So can I just show you this? Uh, just really interesting. So this is Tafsir Ibn Kathir on Surah Al-Maidah, Ayah 89. Mm -hmm. But whoever cannot afford that, then he should fast for three days. Well, by Ibn Qab and Abdullah Ibn Masud and his students read this ayah as follows. Then he should fast three consecutive days. Even if this statement was not narrated to us as part of the Quran's Wumutawata narration, it should still be an explanation of the Quran by the companions uh, that this ruling has been uh, related from the Prophet. So we actually, I don't think it is a Qur'at, I don't think it is a reading. It's just, it's a known that Abdullah ibn Muslim Nubayn Kab said this. Yeah, you want to take so, a picture of this? No, no. Uh, okay. Even if the statement was not narrated to us as part of the Quran, okay, mm. so it's not a reading on the Quran, yeah? Okay, but, you're saying. right, Abdullah ibn Muslim used to say it this way. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. You're saying that Abdullah ibn Masood yeah. understood it this way? Well, he would recite it this way. It's saying it's not part of the Quran. It's it, it's saying it's not Mutawata. So in other words, we can't affirm that this word was in it, because as far as we're aware, it's only Ubay ibn Kab and Abdullah ibn Masood who are saying this word. It would still be an, an explanation of the Quran by the companions. Okay. It has the ruling of being related from the Prophet. The, yeah, so what he's saying is this is the explanation of the Quran I think, by, by the companions. Yeah. Well, I and think he's... Say, wait, wait, wait. What okay. he's saying is yeah, yeah. this mm. is proof. Okay, because there's ulama, they say that the saying of the companions on some topics must come from the Prophet because it's impossible they, they knew about this without coming from the Prophet. Why? Well, but that's problematic though, because the, it's a different that. ruling. I reject that. This is the matter. I reject the opinion of a single Sahaba. I okay. only take the consensus of them. So now you bring in the opinion of a single Sahaba, mm. that's no proof. Well, well so, so it's two, right? So by Ibn Kaab and Adolid Ibn Masud. But there can be ten. If it's not Ijma, it's no oh. proof for me. But do you not accept the weight of those two, given that Muhammad in, in uh, Sahih Hadith says they are the uh, of the four best mat uh, recites of the Quran. No, no problem with that. Okay. Uh, I don't accept the saying of any Sahaba that is by himself or that does not reach the level of Ijma as proof. Yeah, mm -hmm. they are not proof. They are fallible. They may make mistakes. There were munafiqun between the Sahaba. They may have taken from the munafiqun. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Even the mursal from Sahaba, that more like a lot of ulama take, I don't take the mursal from Sahaba because I cannot get, uh, guarantee that this is connected to the Prophet. You don't take so that guy, sorry. You don't take the mursal, the, the hadith that's disconnected from the Sahaba. Yeah. I don't take it. Because like what? What by hadith? Definition, by definition, it's not authentic, so I don't take it. Wait, wait, wait. Which ones? Which which hadith? Sorry. Like what? Which... The ones that are not connected to the Prophet from the Sahaba, the mursal. Right. This is a category. Are you talking about like hadith that doesn't have a complete chain that doesn't exactly. go back? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this. Well, this. Um. This is tafsir like uh, from Ibn Kathir, so it's known among yeah, scholars that this is the case. It doesn't matter, Ibn Abbas, Ibn Masul, whatever it is, if they tafsir, they bring something with proof, I take it. If not, I don't believe it's proof by itself. I respect okay. them, I love them, but mm. they themselves are not proof. Okay, well I think even, even scholars would accept that there were differences not in these different codices. Yeah, there were differences. But... Well, I mean, the, the issue with this particular difference is that it's a difference in Sharia, because it's either yeah, like you. Every uh, other difference. Right. Like, the, this is the, the, the issue. Well, you see, this this, this isn't like they um. Say you have to pray with her because the Prophet right. Salam, right, yeah, they yeah, say you, you have to like you pray with her, and it's a command, and the command by I, the Prophet I, I, is obligation. Right. Then we bring the other hadith that says, yeah, there's okay. a difference. Sh sure. In this instance, though, it's a difference in the Quran that is not a Qur'at <laughs> reading. So that's why. Well, it says it. it well, all, all the Kiryat. I think um, what that's saying is Ibn Masur yeah. is saying this. And the Sahaba mm. cannot come from nothing, so he took it from the Prophet. So this. So it's valid meaning. for the Hanafi school. So they believe this is valid. Okay. I don't believe the, this is a valid proof. But it's. Uh, he's saying it's not Mutawata. It's not every verse of the Quran Mutawata. I thought every verse of the Quran was Mutawata. Is that correct? I think you're not understanding what you're reading there, or okay. you have some kind of disconnection. <laughs> okay, all right, then. all right. So, <laughs> I don't um, believe, uh, yeah. I think what he's saying is the opinion of Sahab and the Tafsir is true. And I don't believe the opinion of Sahab and the Tafsir without a uh, reason of revelation. Like sometimes they say, oh, the reason of revelation was this and that. Then I believe this is true. This Tafsir of the Sahab, I believe it's true because he's bringing a hadith to prove that the reason of Because it gives you a, a, re a reason for the right citation. If, if not, if he says, oh, this means this and that, they right. may be right, they may be mistaken. Okay, so that's real context. Of time, like, yeah. as, like Ibn Masud, Ibn Abbas, they are great, great Sahaba. The majority of time, they will be more correct than others, but that does not mean 100% of time. So I cannot take that as a proof. This is one of the, of the differences we have with the other Madahi.
that we don't take this as proof. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that maybe this conversation will happen with someone from any of them at sure. that mm. and you can argue on this because they will take that as proof, and then mm. you can see where you go from there. Mm. But for me, it's, I'm not the right guy because. I reject this as a proof. Sure. And you're thinking like the okay. colors that. That's so. fine. We'll leave it at that. Okay. You are? Cool. cool. Nice to talk to like, you. Nice. Okay. My name's Chris, by the way. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And that is what Jesus Christ. Almighty God. Yeah. 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 Judaism, they always say that. Islam is similar to Judaism. JC, I'm doing the debate. Yeah, Brazil. So oh, yeah. What Islam has done? What Islam has done? Hamas has killed, beheaded Jews. Is that your religion? So much sad. It's going to be too bright. Should we go over there? Hey, hey, hey. Right, right. Just set that up, sorry. Had a, an interesting talk uh, with a guy who's uh, Sunni Muslim, considers himself Orthodox Sunni Muslim, yeah. but he doesn't follow any of the four madhabs. What? what? Oh, there we go. Oh, okay. All right, there we go. Now I can see people. Oh, that's awesome. All right. So I had a really interesting chat with this Muslim guy who rejects the four madhabs. He has his own understanding of things, and I thought it was interesting because I brought up a particular verse, which was Surah Al Maida, Ayah 89, in which he talks about the ruling for what you are meant to do if you break an oath. And if you went, break an oath, you go through a certain set of things that you have to do, right? But the last thing you do is that you fast for three days. But the interesting thing is that the Tafsir Ibn Kathir explicitly mentions that actually, Abdullah Ibn Masud and Ubay Ibn Kad had their own particular way of reciting that, which is different from the others. And it had an additional word, namely the word consecutive. So going by that, those two people, Ubay ibn Kaab and Abdullah ibn Masud, who are giants in the field of Islam, explicitly said that they had a different understanding of the Quran than what is the Uthmanic Quran today. I think that's quite problematic for Muslims in general, particularly if they believe that the Quran is perfectly preserved, because it clearly shows that two of the biggest, biggest students of Muhammad, so to speak, had totally different understandings of the Quran, especially when it came to legal rulings. But it was a good conversation, and I very much appreciated it. So, God bless you all. Come to our Lord Jesus Christ. I hope you have a great day. God bless.